The world is full of species that have managed to develop insane strategies to survive. Mimicry is a resemblance between an organism and another object, often an organism of another species. There are many types of mimicry in nature, and the array of life that makes use of it is astounding. In this video, we're going to look at animals that use mimicry in remarkable ways. Welcome back to All About Nature. On my channel, I try to bring nature-related content that's educational and entertaining. If you like this kind of content, help me out by liking the video, leaving a comment, or even subscribing to the channel. Before getting started, I want to thank my patrons, including my newest patron, Peter. Today's video was chosen by my patrons through a poll. If you want to get early access to my videos and have a say on the content that I make next, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description below. In 1968, in western Iran, a snake was collected with an odd tail. Scientists believed that what they had was a specimen of the Persian horned viper, but it seemed to have a deformity. The tip of the tail had scales that formed long spindles, almost like hairs, and the very tip was bulbous. But when a second one was found in 2003, Scientists realized that this was in fact a unique species. And the tail? Well, it was actually an extremely creative form of mimicry. The spider-tailed horned viper is found only in the Zagros Mountains of western Iran and eastern Iraq. They're ambush predators, preferring to sit still among the rocks and wait for prey to come to them. Their preferred prey are small birds. But how often do small birds happen to come within striking distance of a snake sitting on the side of a mountain? This is where the ingenious mimicry of the tail comes in. As the vipers sit in waiting, they move the tip of their tail around. And as they do, it looks just like a small desert spider crawling among the rocks. This draws in birds, which the snake can then easily catch and eat. Perhaps the best mimics of them all are the many species of octopus. Across the world's oceans, about 300 species of these cephalopods use their high levels of intelligence for survival. And one of the best ways for them to survive is by mimicking other life around them. They're aided by specialized organs in the skin called chromatophores. This allows them to change their coloration. They can also change the texture of their skin, which helps them create their amazing deceptions. One of the best at mimicry is the aptly named Mimic Octopus. They live in the Indo-Pacific and have been observed acting like a wide variety of other animals. Sometimes they swim like venomous lionfish. Other times, they extend a tentacle or two to appear like a dangerous sea snake. They can inflate their mantles to look like a jellyfish, or swim along the ocean floor like a flounder. They can mimic crabs, tube worms, and sponges, and they change what they mimic based on if they want to avoid predation or draw prey in. Many species of octopus survive using at least some form of mimicry, like this species, which can reveal a large pair of eye spots to look like a moray eel sitting in the reef. I lived in Ecuador for five years and loved every day that I got to spend in that amazing country. While I lived way up in the Andes Mountains in Quito, I would regularly go down to the Amazon rainforest with friends on the weekends. On one trip with my friend Pete and his family, we stumbled on this amazing insect. It was an insect I knew a lot about, but I never imagined I would see one in person. This bug has many different names including the peanut bug, alligator bug, and lanternfly, and they range throughout tropical South America. They look incredibly strange and, in my opinion, 
are the most amazing example of mimicry in the insect world. At first glance, it can be hard to tell what you're looking at, as its body shape is quite atypical. But here we have the wings, which have a cryptic coloration for camouflage. Here are the insect's eyes, and this is just a huge protuberance on its head. But why? While their first line of defense is to go unnoticed by blending in, their second line of defense is, amazingly, to look just like a reptile. From the top view, it isn't clear, but a side view reveals that this unique head feature has false eyes and false teeth, giving it the appearance of a much larger and much more dangerous lizard or even baby caiman. If both the camouflage and the fake lizard head aren't enough, the peanut bug goes into its third line of defense. It pops its wings open, revealing a huge set of fake eyes that look more akin to an owl. They aren't the only insects that do this. The owl butterflies also use huge eye spots on their hind wings in an effort to keep would-be predators away. And many other species of insects use eye spots on their wings that they can reveal when in need. Another group of insects that use mimicry to defend themselves are the swallowtail butterflies. For some species, when the caterpillars hatch, they have distinct black and white markings. These markings make them stand out against the leaves that they eat. So what's the benefit of having such a distinctive pattern? Well, as you can probably see, the caterpillars look like another common sight in nature. Poo. Most species know to avoid droppings from other animals, as they carry an assortment of bacteria that can cause serious harm if ingested. So these caterpillars go relatively unbothered by predators. But if they do get attacked, some species have a secondary defense. The larva of the giant swallowtail can inflate a pair of bright red fleshy appendages that make them appear as if they're suddenly going to sting or bite. Other swallowtail caterpillars have a different strategy. They're born mostly green and try to avoid predation by blending into their surroundings. But when disturbed, they puff up the front of their bodies to reveal two brightly colored eye spots. This makes them look like the head of a snake or a lizard, which most small animals would usually prefer to avoid. Other caterpillars don't need to hide. They're so venomous that every animal in their environment knows to stay away. The flannel moths of North and South America have extremely fuzzy caterpillars that have venomous spines that cause painful swelling, sometimes for days. This is a Cinereus mourner. It's a dull brown bird from South America. And while the adults aren't very interesting to look at, their babies are. They're covered in orange down with white tips. And while this would seemingly make them more conspicuous to predators, they have a trick up their sleeves. When bothered, the chick closes its eyes and changes the position and movements of its body, perfectly mimicking the venomous caterpillars of the flannel moths. Would-be predators, more often than not, choose to look elsewhere for a meal. In tropical America, there's a subfamily of brush-footed butterflies known as the Heliconianae. These long-winged butterflies spend their time as caterpillars eating poisonous plants, resulting in adult butterflies that are not only unpalatable, but also toxic to eat. As a result, the adults advertise the danger of catching them by displaying bright red, orange, yellow, and black patterns on their wings. Another family of butterflies, the Pieridae, isn't quite so lucky. Their caterpillars eat plants that aren't poisonous, and the adults are perfectly edible to most predators. But some species have a solution. While most of the species in this family are white or yellow, a few have patterns that mimic almost the exact coloration and pattern of other specific species of Heliconianae butterflies. 
Predators do not know which ones are toxic and which ones are edible, and so they prefer to stay away from them all, just in case. Most species, including humans, know full well that when they see a small flying insect that's black and yellow, they should probably head the other way. Many species of wasp and bee have this color pattern, and it serves as an effective warning of the danger involved in trying to eat them. They possess stingers, with sometimes powerful venom that can inflict extreme pain, swelling, and in some cases death. So it's pretty impressive that several different groups of insects have evolved to have the exact same color pattern for protection, despite the fact that they're completely harmless. In most gardens, a group of insects that we often see pollinating our flowers, and which appear to be small bees, are actually a family of flies, known as the hoverflies. Just like bees, they have clear wings and bright black and yellow coloration on their abdomens. Like bees, they participate in pollination, making them extremely beneficial for agriculture and the home garden. But unlike bees, they actually cannot sting or bite. Hoverflies rely on their bee and wasp mimicry to keep predators away. Another group of insects that use the same patterning for protection are the bee hawk moths. These small moths are diurnal and feed on nectar from flowers. Not only have they developed the same coloration as wasps and bees, but they have even managed to evolve clear wings to add to their deception. Of course, they're actually entirely harmless, but it's this mimicry that allows them to fly freely during the day without having to worry so much about being eaten by birds. In southeastern Australia lives one of the world's largest species of songbird. The superb lyrebird is mostly terrestrial, with males using their long tail feathers for courting displays. They act much more like pheasants than songbirds, but they have some of the most amazing calls in the animal kingdom. Superb lyrebirds don't participate in any form of physical mimicry. Instead, they mimic the sounds they hear in the forest around them in order to attract a mate. Males construct circular mounds of dirt that they use to display. When a female approaches, they spread their tails over their bodies and heads, slap their wings against their bodies, and begin dancing. As they do this, they sing the repertoire of songs that they have accumulated, mixed in with their own calls. Superb lyrebirds can copy the songs of up to 20 different species. At times, they also copy the sounds made by marsupials in the area that they live. And on occasion, when kept in captivity, they'll mimic man-made sounds like car alarms and camera shutters. Sir David Attenborough described the calls of the superb lyrebird as the most elaborate, the most complex, and the most beautiful in the animal kingdom. In the Indo-Pacific, there exists a group of flatworms that few predators are interested in eating. They display an array of bright colors to warn of their toxicity. They're frequently dark black, with a bright color around the edge, like orange, white, or blue. Sometimes they have spots, and sometimes they have stripes. Soles are a flatfish that live in many of the world's oceans. They normally survive by blending in with the sand. But some species that live in the same range as the flatworms have developed a different method to keep their young alive. 
Instead of blending in, they mimic the bright coloration of the flatworms. They even have a little appendage that sticks out of their heads to look like antenna. Several different species of sole have young that look like a toxic species of flatworm that inhabits the same range as they do. Another fish in the South Pacific is the dusky batfish. These large fish don't have very impressive colors, but just like the soles, their young mimic flatworms in order to avoid predation. They have dark black bodies with a bright orange edge, and when a predator is nearby, they can even turn onto their sides and wave their fins to complete the look. As they grow larger, they lose this coloration. The honey badger has a reputation. They're found throughout much of Africa, the Middle East, and South Asia. Very few animals will attack the honey badger. For one, they have very thick skin, making them difficult to kill. But more importantly, they're strong and will defend themselves ferociously. They get their names because they will fearlessly rip open beehives to eat honey and grubs basically indifferent to the stings of the colony. They can even survive bites from extremely venomous snakes. Most other animals throughout their range recognize them because of their coloration. Their backs are white and gray, and the rest of their bodies are black. This is a signal to other animals to stay away, because the honey badger isn't afraid of attacking even the most dangerous of beasts. This is a cheetah cub. Notice the coloration? Cheetah cubs have one of the highest mortality rates among the large cats, with only about half of them surviving to adulthood. Cubs have coats that mimic the coloration of honey badgers, and this helps keep predators from attacking them. While not all cheetah cubs have the dark coloration on the legs, most at least have the distinctive patch of light gray fur on their backs which is enough to deter at least some larger animals from attacking them. And that's it for today's video. What's your favorite animal mimic? Before you go, if you're able to help me out with a like and a comment, I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.